Well, of course, one of the biggest off-season stories for the Nashville Predators is Andrew Brunette coming in as new head coach. What's he going to be like as the main guy behind the bench? We're going to talk to Armando Velez from Locked on Panthers, somebody who knows exactly what Andrew Brunette is like as a coach today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, want to start out with a special hello to our loyal Locked On Pred heads, the everydayers who tune into every single show. We love you guys. We appreciate the support you give us week after week. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio. And no, that is not Ann Kim. Kimmel across from me today. It is Armando Velez from Locked on Florida Panthers podcast joining us today. Armando, appreciate you stepping in. uh, Thank you for having me, Nick. Very, very thankful to be joining uh, the show. And also, I really like the nickname for Predators fans, Preds Heads. That's a a really, really cool nickname. And anybody who listens to the show knows uh, there was some two weeks of debate between Ann and myself to figure out uh, what what exactly we should call our everyday listeners. Uh, So I I am glad that you support the nickname because I was all in on that one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I uh, also want to mention today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets back guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. As we mentioned, Armando Velez from Locked On Florida Panthers podcast is our special guest today. And the reason we have you on, Armando, is the guy who is going to be behind the bench for the Nashville Predators this year, Andrew Brunette, the new head coach of the Preds. Uh, Of course, his last coaching stint was actually an interim coaching stint with you guys, the Florida Panthers, uh, one that resulted in a Jack Adams nominee that year. Uh, So there's a couple of things I want to ask you kind of about what to expect from Andrew Burnett, maybe your perspective on him as a coach. Plus uh, you guys had a fun uh, last couple of months with the Florida Panthers making that Stanley cup playoff run. Of course, the Preds had something similar last team in the field, making it all the way to the finals a few years ago. I want to ask you uh, a few things about that as well. But let's start uh, with Andrew Burnett. So first off, just from a Florida Panthers expected perspective, uh, somebody who watched him, somebody who covered him, uh, what was your take on him coming to Nashville as the new head coach? Well, before I get into that, this this episode between you and I was months in the making. I remember you asked me in June while the Florida Panthers were in the Stanley Cup final, but schedules were a little bit conflicting at the time. Just you were busy. For, for, for that. So glad to finally make it up to you and actually jump on. So apologies to you and Anne uh, specifically. But yeah, when, when it comes to Andrew Burnett uh, being the head coach of the Nashville Predators, I always said that when he did not get hired, for uh, the Florida Panthers to, as the interim tag to be removed uh, for 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 the Panthers, which ended up not happening. I always said that he was going to get an opportunity again. This was the start of something for a- a- Andrew Burnett. And let's also not forget the, the hot seat that Lindy Ruff was on last season going into the season with the New Jersey Devils, still a very young team. Up, up and coming team and the expectations we heard fire Lindy and then sorry Lindy a few weeks later with the New Jersey Devils and the the betting odds even for first coach fired Lindy Ruff was on top of that list and yeah. and I was even talking about Jack with Paramount Sports about Andrew Burnett being hired as an assistant coach with the New Jersey Devils is like that hire is looked at as if that were to happen Bruno would be in a, in a spot once again to be an interim head coach for the New Jersey Devils. So this was a little bit of developing, not necessarily one specific franchise developing, but him personally developing into a head coach uh, someday. And 
L- listen, when you have uh, when you're under a mentor at the time in Joel Quenville, which unfortunately with it, all some off the ice situations during his time in Chicago right. forced the Florida Panthers to and and Joel Quenville for him to resign as as well. Then then here comes here comes Andrew Burnett in in a very difficult situation, already starting off seven zero and zero for the 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 Florida Panthers as well. Came into a great situation and the difference between the Florida Panthers and Nashville Predators obviously is now with the new GM in, in Nashville, you are embracing. I don't know if I want to call it a rebuild, but maybe like a little bit of a retool. I, I don't see the Nashville Predators. If you're talking about it from an outside perspective, I don't see the, I don't see the Nashville Predators as like maybe a top five team as far as getting to the top of the NHL entry draft next season, maybe something along the lines of like, maybe like anywhere between the six and 15 part of it. Maybe even who knows, they could even sneak into a wild card spot on um, next, next season based on from, uh, from, it, looking as a league as a whole, the Western Conference is the is the the weaker of the two conferences, in my opinion. Sure. But yeah. you're talking about you're talking about a, a, a guy a, a, a situation where you're expected to win versus maybe maybe in the situation of Nashville developing uh developing more players. I mean, you have players in in the Nashville Predators that are still on the on the come up, like Thomas Novak, Luke Evangelista. You still have a forty goal score in Philip Forsberg as well. You still got a, a fir- first round talent in Col- Cody Glass in your in the in the bottom six. You signed Luke Shen to a free agent deal um, from from Toronto as well. So and Ryan O'Reilly. Let's not forget Conn Smythe yeah. winner Ryan O'Reilly. So it's a it's a I'm seeing a little bit of a mix of veterans, but a, a, also an opportunity to develop. Is Andrew Burnett a developmental coach? We have to wait and see. I mean, he does have front office experience. Let's not forget when he was with the Minnesota Wild as well. And he's been through the gauntlet of even when in his playing days in the NHL when he was uh, he was a clutch playoff performer with the Minnesota Wild. And a guy who's been through uh, multiple expansion teams with the Atlanta Thrashers. The first, I believe, he wasn't he the first goal in Nashville Predators history as well? Nashville Predators history. So, he was in Minnesota Wild for their first so, playoff yeah. run. He's been through the gauntlet. Um, so if there's anyone who's prepared for this, it's Bruno. Yeah. You mentioned a couple of things. Uh, one is the decision not to make him the head coach, because I think that surprised everybody uh, across the NHL. You know, the, the the season that, you know, he I mean, he stepped in when Quenville left, and all he did as an interim head coach was lead the Panthers to a president's trophy, like the best, one of the best teams in, in franchise history uh, at that time. Everybody was like, oh yeah, like the, the Panthers have stumbled into their next head coach. He's the guy. Like, and, and even at the off season, like it seemed like, oh, well, you know, you know, we're, we're still, you know, interviewing candidates and stuff, but it, it kind of seemed more of like a formality than a thing. So it was very surprising you know, I think to a lot of people from the outside, when Paul Maurice came in, you know, somebody, you know, one of those coaching retreads as a lot of people in the NHL yep. like to talk about. Um, I mean, obviously, now that we have hindsight, that seemed to work out pretty well for the Florida Panthers. But at the time, uh, when that move was announced, were you surprised or, or what was kind of going on behind the scenes? I wasn't necessarily surprised because the longer it went, it was it was uh, you were getting to the point where it's like, I don't think he's uh, returning. And the fact that the conversation was even if they hired Paul Maurice to to possibly put um, Andrew Burnett in in an assistant coach role, you're 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 talking about someone's dignity here as far as uh, as far as Bruno. And if I were in that position, I wouldn't have taken an assistant an an assistant coaching job if, if I was not hired after getting 51 out of those 58 wins when, when bringing in, but at the same time, when, when it comes to, when it comes to playoff hockey games are games are low scoring. That's the, just the truth of it. And the Panthers 4.11 goals uh, per game during the 2021, 22 season leading to a president's trophy. Uh, the shot, so the shot differences as well with the, with the Panthers, they were leading the league in shots while giving up the 23rd most in, in the, in the, in the league that just goes to show that there's a lot of second chance opportunities turnovers in in the neutral zone as well which andrew burnett team well i can't say andrew burnett teams because he's only had one year of being a head coach but that andrew burnett team 
was a was a team that broke a lot of passes in the neutral zone and then went off in transition the, the run and gun style of hockey as well and and it, even though the florida panthers did win uh their first playoff series in 26 years when they faced off against the washington capitals the washington capitals did expose them as far as taking away that speed through the neutral zone and also when it came to the power play andrew burnett before he was promoted to interim head coach was was responsible for the power play and when he was uh officially the interim head coach he he did something bold as far as putting five forwards on the power play for the panthers which ended up being uh, and ended up being fifth in the NHL, but that power play struggled for the for a good portion of the season. They went a few months without winning a road game as well. A Presidents Trophy winning um, team struggled for a few months uh, w- winning uh, winning on the road. Uh, I I remember for 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 the Panthers and 0 for 18 in round one, one for 31 in the playoffs total. So that kind of gave the Florida Panthers it's like. Mm, Maybe the maybe this high powered offense is not what really helps us uh, win o- overall. So maybe that was that time to pivot. Yeah, you hit on something that's interesting uh, for the Nashville Predators perspective, and that is just what Andrew Burnett's philosophy to offense is. And I want to talk more about that in just a second. Plus, you, of course, just covered a Stanley Cup uh, finals run, something Nashville Predators fans from a few years ago are familiar with. We're going to talk about how these teams can kind of build off that sort of Cinderella run and move towards maybe being a consistently good NHL team. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to mention today's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL is officially back, people. Go Lions, 1-0. Uh, and FanDuel is giving all fans a chance to win all season long because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. So if you were to pick the Miami Dolphins or Tennessee Titans to win the Super Bowl, number one, bold choice. Number two, anytime those two teams win during the regular season, you get bonus bets. And those are bonus bets that you can use to bet the spreads, player props, how many yards rushing is Derrick Henry going to get, how many catches is Jalen Waddle going to have in a game, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. Again, FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. All right, we are back with Armando Velez from Locked On Panthers talking Andrew Burnett. Uh, you, you talked about Andrew Burnett's run and gun style in as in reference to you know how he kind of approaches the offense. Uh, the Preds have been let let's say offensively starved uh, for a little bit. They they're you know there's kind of the defense first philosophy for many many years. Uh, John Hines kind of had the counterattack style, sort of a sit back and, and survive the storm. So in a way, I think when you talk about Andrew Burnett kind of going all out in terms of offense, Preds fans are kind of thinking, yeah, OK, uh, sure, we'll, we'll take that. What, I guess, from a philosophy, maybe an X's and O standpoint, can fans expect to see? Uh, with Andrew Burnett behind the bench, like 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 we spoke about the the question is he a developmental coach when 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 it, when it's all said and done when it comes to the when it comes to, when it comes to that and listen like 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 it helps that on the other end they have one of the best goaltenders in the NHL in uh, in UC Soros as well they have a Norse um, um, Trophy winning defenseman in 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 Roman Yossi as well so. I'm I'm not necessarily saying that the Nashville Predators are going to be top five in goals against, but having those two, having those two uh, on on your on your de- defensive end is is definitely going to really help. Um, hopefully, hopefully generate um, some some offense going the other way as, as well for uh, the Nashville Predators as well. But when it comes to when it comes to Andrew Burnett and all and all, uh, there's going to be some lessons learned uh, from from the postseason run, especially. Um, it, it took it took a while for him to implement his his own. You know, when 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 you're an assistant coach, not necessarily not necessarily that you're laying back and all that stuff, but you're still you're you're still learning on the job as well. And and the fact that Andrew Burnett um, 
had had the opportunity to put his own staple in and then of course learn under some another coach who's made a Stanley Cup run while he was with Buffalo in in Lindy Ruff that 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 helps him prepare for this opportunity for the for the National Predators and it helps really for that Andrew Burnett has 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 a general manager who was his head coach as well when he was there with a whole bunch of draft capital getting a whole bunch of return from J- Tanner Janot you got something for Matthias Ekholm as well. Also got Tyson Berry in that trade, C- clearing up some cap in in Ryan Johansson um, as well. I was very surprised that they did buy out Matt Duchesne. I was that was a very shocking one that I saw. So you're wondering, okay, Johansson Johansson's gone. Matt Matt Duchesne is 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 gone as well. Where's the offensive? What, where's the offense going to come from as well as as you're bringing an older guy in in Ryan O'Reilly as as well. So. As far as offense, maybe that system doesn't necessarily work in year one. But let, remember, let's let's also not forget this is a transitional period for the the Nashville Predators as, as well. David Poyle is not there anymore for for the first time in twenty some odd years as as well for 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 Nashville. So this is a new era. It's going to be a patient approach from at least from an outsider's perspective with Nashville as as well. So the the fact that there's gonna be a vote of confidence as well from everyone up top. Mm-hmm. That that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna give Andrew Burnett that that opportunity to to even though he is the boss, still kind of that learn 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 as as he's growing as as a head coach for this team. But again, it goes back to the question: de- development. What what's that gonna look like? And that's, I think, a question that we're still trying to figure out because the Predators have some, you know, young players that are very exciting, but you wouldn't necessarily call them blue chip. You know, Luke Evangelista is a guy who came into the lineup last year and just absolutely blew everybody away uh, in his first, you know, 15, 20 games in in the NHL. Uh, You mentioned Cody Glass. That's somebody who we're still kind of trying to figure out what exactly his ceiling is. Phil Tomasino was a guy that came into the lineup as a 20 year old two years ago, uh, played mostly bottom line minutes and still got 31 points uh, as a 20 year old while playing with, you know, for, for lack of better term, AHL players. And then he went back to the AHL last year. So there are some players that I think a lot of people are excited to see in Brunette's system because they're like, look, you know, these were young players. They have a lot of upside, how are they going to fit in? Can Andrew Burnett take somebody like Evangelista or, as you mentioned earlier, Tommy Novak and find a creative way to use them? Maybe use them like, you know, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, like in Florida, like some of those players that you can kind of find ways uh, to break through. Um, you know, th- to me, the biggest thing is just going to come two, three years from now, because that's when the blue chip players come in. And that's the, your Yoakum Kamel. That's your Matthew Wood, um, you know, Yaroslav, Askarov, and Gold. Some of these players that are legitimate, you know, building blocks for a winning team. It's just a matter of can Andrew Burnett develop enough of the other guys to make the Preds kind of a viable team when they do get there. Um, and that's it, it seems like that was kind of the question for the Florida Panthers for a long time, wasn't it? Because you had Aaron Eckblad, you had Huberto, you know, Poor one out for him, although I guess Matthew Kachuk is just fine. Um, you know, Sasha Barkov and kind of all of these young, like really talented players. And it wasn't until Quenville came in and then later Andrew Burnett that it, it sort of all came together. And the Panthers finally found kind of the chemistry to get them all going at the same time. Yeah. And, and let's also not forget that Sergey Bobrovsky, as far as the regular season as well, under Andrew Burnett had his best regular season as well. And this is something that I mentioned on the, on my show plenty of times. Every time Sergei Bobrovsky has been threat, um, there has been a threat for his crease to be taken away. He's always stepped up and performed. The season before, uh, Spencer Knight finishes the playoff series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. The very next season, he has uh, his, his best, his best uh, season as a Florida Panther, even though I don't necessarily put too much stock into goalie wins because there's so many different factors to it. He had, he had right. the most wins in a, in a, in a, in a regular season in, in Florida Panthers history in, in, in a single season as well. So for, for what that's worth um, there with, with Sergey Bobrovsky as well. And, and listen, 
let's also not forget that not, not only with UC Soros, they have a decent back backup in Kevin Lincoln, and who had a pretty de- um, decent season. The Florida Panthers, when they faced the National Predators, they avoided UC Soros both times, but they lost to Kevin Lincoln in both times th- throughout yeah. la- last season as well. So they, 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 they you don't ha- need, you don't, don't sleep on on either of the goaltenders for Nashville. Nashville, I think it's going to be really be really hard to uh, score goals against this team as well. Like like I said earlier. And and yeah, when it when it came when it comes to when it comes to that and and the situation for for the Panthers as well, the the, the Panthers were still up and coming. The the Panthers were still struggling to get through. They only had a, prior to that coaching staff coming coming to the fold, they only made the playoffs once with that with that core in 2016, um, losing to the New New York Islanders in six. And you you know you ask yourself. You ask yourself, was the leadership and the uh, of Yarmi Yager going away as far as how much it impacted this team, a- 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 as far as Barkov, Ekblad, and Huberto taking that next step? Uh, it w- obviously, that was a good start to their young careers as well. But also, they needed a coach who would kick them in the rear end as well, as far as getting them over. And listen, listen, when when you're when you are behind the the second winning as head coach in NHL history. Uh you're gonna you're gonna learn a thing or two two there. And you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put it's like making something into a pot and putting things together. You're gonna add a little bit from one coach. You're gonna add a little bit from the other and, and you're gonna put your own stamp into that. And that's what really what Andrew Burnett has has learned. I mean this has been a great two to three year stretch for for Andrew Burnett as far as learning. But as far as mistakes made for Bruno, the one thing that I was kind of rolling my eyes during the first round of the postseason, even though the Florida Panthers did end up winning that series against Washington, was I wish he did not say this to the media when when the Panthers were down two to one against Washington, was admitting to the public that the the guys seemed a little nervous going into the into the series, and I'm just thinking, yeah, you could feel nervous. But why is it something that you're talking about publicly? And I think that as far as speaking to the media as well, which he's a cool, calm, collective person from all the interviews that I've seen. But those are, I think those are lessons that he's, he himself is, is going to learn as well of, even though there is a certain vibe in his room that he's not going to expose that publicly like he, he did the first go round. Yeah. That's it's interesting from that sort of side of the head coaching job, because, you know, there are some brilliant X's and O's guys, like some brilliant strategists, brilliant developers who don't make a good head coach. And we see that in NFL and college all the time. Meanwhile, you know, there are some good guys out there, like some of the most, you know, best head coaches out there. Maybe they're not the best strategist. Maybe they know how to just kind of handle people well. And for Andrew Burnett, it seems like, you know, that's going to kind of be the big lesson. You know, can he handle sort of the, I guess, the the front facing aspects of being a head coach? Like you said, like saying the right things to the media, you know, giving enough of an answer that, you know, you don't seem you know, I I guess detached, but also not, you know, saying anything that's going to, you know, rub your team the wrong way, or, you know, maybe expose something uh, to, you know, coach on another team that you don't really want to expose by your locker room, like feeling nervous. That's something that I think the, you know, teams can definitely take advantage of in the playoffs. Like they know how to kind of get the mental aspect of them down. So to me, yeah, go ahead. One more thing. He also had to deal with. Uh, he had to also deal with the a rumor out there that the Florida Panthers, after Game Three of the second round, overnight went to a strip club and having to answer questions on that. So not necessarily his fault, but he had to also face something like that. And also, when the Florida Panthers ended up getting swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know, again, not his fault, but he had to face that music as well as the guy in in, in the head coach as as well. So wanted to put that in there as far as things he had to deal with that'll do it strong uh alexander radiloff fives but yeah i mean there, there's so much more into being a head coach than just how do you want this team to play like it's how do you want this team to act like how do you want them to come across in the media what's your perception of them going to be on the national stage that to me i think is a very interesting thing um 
Andrew Burnett still has to deal with uh, to, to be a good head coach in the NHL. Uh, so as you mentioned, didn't get the job in Florida. It, it went to Paul Maurice. Uh, a lot of people were kind of iffy on that. And then the Panthers went to the Stanley uh, Cup Finals. And it's just from an outside perspective, um, one of the one of the most random, I think, Cup, Cup Finals from an outside perspective. Yeah. Uh, of course, there, there's that famous quote, you know, that famous sort of scenario about the Panthers being a one different result in the, the Pittsburgh Penguins versus Chicago Blackhawks way away from not being there. That, of course, was the win that got the, the Blackhawks Connor Bedard. That was the loss that knocked the Panthers out or knocked the Penguins out, put the Panthers in. Um, you know, and even, you know, you look and they're 3 1 down to Boston Bruins, the, the best team in NHL history in terms of points during the regular season. And then it just seemed like a completely different team came out there especially in rounds two and three i mean th these panthers look dominant from your perspective just just what was that playoff run like you know as somebody who's followed the panthers for so long pretend this is pretend my yeti that you see on the camera is champagne i was literally like this <laughs> when when the chicago blackhawks beat the pittsburgh penguins on the road on, on the road yeah. and uh shout out to buddy robinson and andreas as soon as uh, for the Chicago Blackhawks for for putting them over the top as far as as far as helping the Florida Panthers and yeah they're also a Brad Marchand breakaway goal in Game Five away from losing uh, that series as well as time was winding down before before overtime as well and just uh it's just a crazy run I mean listen Nashville Predators they went on a they were an AC that went on to a Stanley Cup final run and then the very next season they won the President's Trophy for the Florida Panthers it was backwards win the President's Trophy first and then get in as an AC and go to the Stanley Cup final so just crazy overall and the fact that once Carter Verhage scored that game winner for for the Florida Panthers like wow the biggest upset in Stanley Cup uh, playoff uh, history and both first round first and second round series of course we are responsible for doing crossovers prior to our series with the teams that we are facing against uh i picked the opposition both times i picked the the bruins in six and i picked i believe i picked the leafs in seven i believe against the panthers uh, in in the second round but after that after that nick cousins former predator nick cousins uh scored the game winner in game five which the Panthers had seven overtime winners in that playoff run. Uh, they, which under Andrew Burnett, they had thirteen overtime winners, not not shootouts, overtime winners in that Presidents Trophy winning season. They they had seven in that postseason run, and just what again, like we said it in the first segment, the game slows down in the postseason. The Panthers prior to January, when they were down in the second period, going into the in, in, going into the third they lost a hundred percent of the time. It wasn't really until late January where the Florida Panthers were starting to uh, come back and win games. And it really helps that they were a lot healthier as, as well as, as the trade deadline was, was, uh, was uh, coming up. And it's funny because like we said, with the Panthers facing the Predators uh, twice in a, in a little bit of a span, that was in the middle of the trade deadline as well, both, both of those matchups. So the Panthers were at, at, at a crossroads during that time, but they got healthier. Panthers this coming season as well. They're going to be without Aaron Eckblad and Brandon Montour to start the season as well because of all the injuries they accumulated during the run. So just, uh, just you know, the product of going on a long run and and just uh, the bruises, the being battered and bruised on, on your body throughout a, a whole run as as well. But yeah, great, just uh, an overall great, uh, great run for 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 the Panthers. It it is really has. The whole region hyped for this, and the, and what the Panthers did during the off season is, you know, it, and it's really multiple off seasons as well as as they had become that destination franchise. Of you know, Matthew Kachuk wanted to be traded to the Florida Panthers yeah. prior the season prior. Jumbo Joe Thornton during his while he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs and they were facing off against the Montreal Canadiens. The the series that he was watching outside of that was Florida. Tampa Bay as far as exciting a team to watch uh, a team that can score uh, uh, as well that those that was a team that that he had his eye on as well Oliver Ekman Larson who's trying to prove something outside after being bought out by the Vancouver Canucks 
he's coming to the Florida Panthers as well, and he's likely going to be QB one on on the power play for for uh, for the Florida Panthers as, as as well to start the season before Ekblad and Montour are are ready to come back as well. So mm-hmm. and Mike Riley being bought out by the Boston Bruins as well, likely a third pair guy. He's he's going to be he's going to he's going to has something to prove as well after playing only ten games as well. Ever Rodriguez, who's played with Sidney Crosby and Nathan McKinnon in back to back years, late bloomer in his career, coming to the Florida Panthers. And and a guy who could score on both on 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 the power play likely going to be on the power on power play too. T- top line left wing with S- Sasha Barkov as well. You you have guys who are willing also to take less. Of course, with the sal- salary cap being what it is in the NHL, you 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 gotta you know sacrifice a little bit if you want to be on a contending team. If you want to get paid and, and all, you you you. you and, and and make it big and make it big in in if you're uh if you're 28 or somewhere between 30, 28 and 34 you, you got maybe you sign with the Anaheim Ducks but if you want to win and and take less Florida Panthers are one of those teams uh as far as as far as willing to sacrifice a little bit just to win yeah and the Florida Panthers are certainly I think a team a lot of people are going to be watching this year to do big things and that was the same case for Nashville uh, in 2018 of course 2017 they made that sort of same out of nowhere playoff run got to the Stanley Cup finals uh, you know got took the Pittsburgh Penguins to six games uh, you know uh, they're a very notorious bad call in game six maybe flips a, a couple things in that series but you know the, the thing what happened for the Nashville Predators is just the expectations skyrocketed and in a way it sort of changed what the, the the fan expectations were what sort of the franchise was you know Nashville had kind of been all you know this this scrappy underdog for so long and it kind of seems like the Panthers you know for for you know the past couple of decades ever since Pavel Bure walked out the door uh have kind of been in that same boat but now you know I, I remember you know 2018 everybody looked at Nashville and it's like okay they just got to the finals they have Pecorino and goal they have uh uh, Roman Yossi, they have PK Subban. Look, Philip Forsberg's like not even 25 years old yet. Same with Victor Arvid, same, same with Ryan Johansson. All of this young talent, and it just seemed like you know, the Predators had two very good seasons after that. You know, they they got the President's Trophy in 2018 and then two straight, you know, uh, division titles after that, but it just seemed like the fans were on edge. With, with every single thing, like every rough playoff performance, every bad game against a bad team. And that sort of, I, th- I think, shaped, you know, why John Hines and David Poyle were on the hot seat for so long uh, over the past couple of years is just the expectations skyrocketed after that cup run. So I ask you this, you know, kind of in that same vein as a Panthers fan, what – do you want to see from this team that sort of keeps them in that echelon of top teams? Well, thankfully, thankfully, uh, Barkoff and Kachuk are under contract for seven more years um, after their Stanley Cup final run. But it really comes down to what's going to happen with the defense as well. Next next offseason, you're only going to have to keep one of Brandon Montour uh, or Gus Forsling. Brandon Montour is likely going to be a $7 million, uh, plus uh, AAV player um, um, after scoring the most points in a single season by a defenseman in Florida Panthers history. And it, it's really going to come out to this also the development of Spencer Knight as well. Um, after this season, Sergei Bobrovsky his no move clause becomes a 16 team, no trade clause as well. So do you try to get out of that contract as well to build more around the forward and the defense step for the Florida Panthers? Thankfully for the cats, they made the Stanley cup final while having 6.4 million of dead cap from buyout money from Keith Yandel. Now a lot of things are, op- have opened up this off season. Things are going to open up a, a little bit more the next off season as the cap is hopefully going to rise to 87.5 million. As far as the, what the projections are saying, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed as well, Nick, for, for sure. <laughs> but that's, that's really going to be, that's really going to be the, 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 the point for, for the, for the Florida Panthers, as far as what, what, what it's going to take to take that next step for, for, for the cats as well. Thankfully they got their, Radko Gudis the replacement in Nico Mikola as as well signed to a a, a good term for a really cheap deal for for the Panthers like we mentioned Evan Rodriguez 
has some term as well. So, you know, you, you, you know, the guys who are going to be here for a while as well, but it's really going to, it's really going to be who, how that defense looks. And it's also going to be the fact that the Florida Panthers don't have a first round pick until 2026. What, what are the young guys going to do as far as, as a Mackie Semiskevich, who's, who's now in his first year of his entry level deal, he's going to start off in AHL Charlotte this year, but Grigor Denisenko, their first round pick from 2017, he now signed an extension, but that's a one-way deal. He's he's like he's gonna make the team, but still doesn't have an NHL goal yet. What's what's he gonna do as far as as far as producing for the Florida Panthers? How he how is he gonna develop? Because you gotta you gotta work with you gotta be able to to bank on your cheap contracts as well. So that's really one of the contracts for the Florida Panthers that's really really gonna be um gonna be key to the Florida Panthers continuing that and that last year. Their Stanley Cup, their run to the Stanley Cup final was not their ceiling. Hopefully, yeah. Fingers crossed for you, because uh, I love watching the Florida Panthers. I think it's a super fun team. Matthew Kuchuk, um, one of my favorite players in the NHL right now. Uh, so, so I'm hoping you guys uh, can get over the hump. Uh, Armando, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. You can catch him uh, soon to be daily once we get back to our daily schedules on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Uh, you can also find me daily on the Nashville Predators Locked On Predators podcast. Be sure to subscribe to both of us on whichever platform you use, whether it's Spotify, Apple, or you're just watching us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so you'll always know when we each have fresh content out for you. That's going to do it for today's Locked On Predators podcast. Thanks, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. New episodes coming next week. We'll see you then.